So welcome to part two of this Moto uh, tutorial. Uh, for this section, I'm just going to boast over some of the uh, time-lapse video that I've taken, and I'll point out some of the tools I use and why I use them uh, as we go through this video. Uh, so first, I just start off by deleting half of the vehicle. I don't need to really use the other half for anything, so I just get rid of it. Uh, now I'm just going to go back into the Topology tab, where I start to push and pull some of the points around to kind of capture the lines a little bit better. Now I'm just using the topology pen tool and pulling out a row of polygons to capture the form of the hood. From here I establish some of the edges uh, that I want to use as my design lines and start connecting uh, the polygons together so the topology flows from one design line uh, to the next. Uh, for this, I try and keep all the polygons kind of evenly spaced. You can see here I'm moving some of them around just to have better spacing and even flow to the polygons. Now I'm just pulling out a line uh, from the one character line down to the next. And I just repeat this process until I've connected all of the uh, character lines that I want to capture for this design. A lot of this stuff through the body side is pretty linear, so you're going to have pretty consistent topology or, uh, or flow of polygons. And now I'm just going to start pulling out from the fender uh, to that body side character line there, and now tuck under the uh, wheel arch flat so it rolls under the body. I'm not exactly following the uh, surfacing I had made before but I'm getting it close enough to where I think uh, I want that surface to be. Again, I'm just capturing the design lines and pulling polygons uh, between them. This way I have a nice flow overall from one edge to another. I'm going to add a couple more uh, loops there to capture some more detail and start connecting some of those surfaces there. Again, this is why I use the topology tool, because you can focus on having good, uh, clean uh, edge flow and, and polygon spacing uh, without having to worry about the design. A lot of this uh, actually applies when modeling without an underlying car. So if you have a design uh, that you're working from a sketch or something, you can work the same way, because everything here is just pretty linear. Everything's just connected or no form between the edges right now. Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit here. I'm going to start breaking away from uh, the topology mode and I'll start sculpting or forming the surfaces between all of the edges. So now I'm going to go through and uh, try and capture all of the hard edges by adding edge weight. Uh, I'll just select the edges and use the edge weight tool in the drop down in the vert under the vertex map toolbox. Now I'm going to add a couple loops to the fender and use the fall off tool to kind of pull up the center of this fender there just to give it a little bit of, of uh, positive surfacing. This is, this is pretty much the technique, the, this is pretty much the typical workflow uh, when I'm outside of the topology tab. Uh, that's why I establish my hard edges first and then I can start forming all the surfaces between them. Here I'm just trying to figure out how I want these polygons to flow. So you can see here I'm back in the topology tab uh, using the underlying mesh as a guide for that. Now I'm just sliding some polygons around and kind of fixing some of the um, polygons here to get them to flow correctly. Now I'm going to add edge weight to those areas there to define the hard edges. And I'll go back and forth uh, trying to figure out um, kind of how you want things to transition. Like this area is always a bit tricky um, depending on some of the design elements that have to blend into the fender there. So I'm just going to slice some new new edges uh, just so I can help redefine some of that uh, design element there. Now I'm using the selection tool and in this um, selection tool I use uh, 
the actual selection to kind of uh, average between the curve there. And I use a scale tool to help flatten that out. Again, just adding some edge weight to that area to define the hard edge. Now I'm going to go through and actually select all of the edge weighting that I've applied. I use the statistics bar and use the um, subdivision selection there to select everything so I can give it a little bit more, a uh, little bit harder edge. Uh, that just helps uh, if you visualize it a little bit more. Now I'm just using my matte cap shader to check some of the, the reflections and, and surface continuity, trying to see where some of the bumps and stuff might be. Right now it's not looking too bad. Now I'm going to start defining this area here. So I'm just going to slide that loop closer to the one next to it to help tighten up that line there. I don't usually use bevel, um, but a lot of times I um, use edge weight for that area. It seems like it needed to be a little bit softer. Now I'm actually just going and straightening up some of these lines here to help um, flatten out some of these uh, edges that are a little bit bumpy and just trying to clean them up there. So I'm actually just using the selection tool and scaling them to fit to a flat plane. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the topology pen again just to establish kind of the flow of that um, surface there just so I can I actually did like the curvature of the surface underneath it and now I'm just deciding where I want some of these loops to go so like I did on the fender in this area I'm going to do the same thing and use the fall off tool to kind of pump that surface up and give a little bit of uh, positive feeling and then I'm just using the matte cap shaders to check that And now I'm adding a couple more loops just so I can have everything flow from the fender uh, into that top surface there underneath the window. Again here, this is where I use the fall off tool to kind of pump things out. Or you can push and pull points, either way is up to you. I like the fall off tool because it, um, just like the name says, it gives you a little more control on uh, the area that's going to be Kind of morphed versus the area that can stay where it needs to be. Again, I'm just flattening that out and I'll go back and forth and delete some loops or you know some edge lines that I don't like. Um, as you're sculpting some of these surfaces and forming them, you know, you'll decide what you want and the best way to do it. So here I'm just getting kind of getting rid of that little dip uh, right where these two elements kind of fit together. So I'll just be pushing and pulling these points a little bit more. Uh, now I now I'm going to start forming this area underneath this fender. Just again pushing and pulling points and using the matte cap shader to kind of help refine some of the reflections and see how they travel across the surface. This is not perfect, you know, class A surfacing, but it kind of gets the design intent is good for image creation or even you know sending to a mill to get this milled out or you know, make, maybe make an RP model or something like that. So again just pushing and pulling these points to get some of the re reflections to travel nicely. Uh, here I noticed I forgot to add the edge weight on that so I just redid it there. Now I'm going to start forming some of this fender and figure out the topology I want there. It's not too bad at this moment, but I think I'm trying to decide if I want the, like a scoop to kind of follow up down to that uh, wheel arch there. And I'm just going to add edge weight to define these hard edges again and kind of redo some of these the edge flow here uh, just because I'm going to add a kind of light catcher in that area, so I want to curve. I want to be able to split that one or split those surfaces right down the middle there. I'm just flattening out the rocker using the scale tool. And you can see in top view there, I've got some nice curvature, uh, but as you sight down it, you see it's a bit bumpy and it's got a bit of a negative S as you get to the to the front of the fender there. So now I'm just going to go through and start cleaning up some of these lines using the fall off tool. 
just to pull that out in the center and get rid of that kind of negative it had at the end. Now I'm just going to, uh, I guess, bevel this to give it a little more uh, crown to that surface as the rocker tucks under. And now I'm just going to do a, add an edge loop here to cut this area in half so I can use the fall off tool to kind of push that area in and give me a, a light catcher on the rocker there. I'm just going to go through and clean up some of the bumps and kind of straighten out some of these lines there. Again, I've got a little bit of a negative area here. As you sight down things, it's easier to see those. So I'm just going to pull this out and fix some of the curve on this line here. Now I'm just going to tuck this area a little back a little bit. I wanted the the rear of that surface to have a little more positive feeling to it. And then I'm just going to flatten out the front here so the light catcher area blends nicely into the fender. This area is going to be a little tricky, so I just kind of just uh, start pushing and pulling points until I figure out uh, how I want to connect that area. And I'll get off of it for a little bit. I like to try and work on other areas if I can't figure out something. And now I'm just going to add a couple loops in here to tighten this area up. Once I tighten that up, I'm going to grab a couple of these ones down here and use the fallout tool to help spread them out. I'm just using the slide tool uh, to help do that. Now I'm going to flatten that area out a little bit and add a couple more, or another loop, uh, just to help tighten it up in that area as well. Now I'm just using the selection tool and using the average to flatten out some of these lines. Uh, that'll help uh, fade out the tightness of the incoming line there. Now I'm going to sight down this and check this line. You can see it's really curvy and bendy. So I use the scale tool again to help flatten that line out. And then I'll move it uh, into, the, into position. Uh, doing the same thing with this line here. And then I'll use the fall off tool to help bend this surface out a little bit more. Uh, give it a little more positive feeling to it. Same with the underlying edge as well. Now I'm going to add a couple of loops and use the fall off tool to help sculpt and bend this surface. And then you can use the fall off tool to manipulate the area in which um, that's done. Now I'll use the matte cap shader just to check, check that. So a lot of it is pretty repetitive. Uh, it's pretty much just establishing your hard edges and then forming the surfaces between it. That's my typical workflow for something like this. And as I said before, this same process can be applied when modeling uh, from a sketch. You now establish your hard uh, design lines first, bridge between them, and start forming the surface, uh, whether it's negative, positive, or some transition area. And then I use the, the matte cap shaders a lot just to verify uh, or evaluate uh, some of these surfaces here. And it's good to do it with um, the model smooth, uh, especially when you're trying to track some of the reflections. But you can see where there will be bumps when it's in the unsmooth mode. So I kind of switch between those a lot. Now I just uh, symmetried the model so I can see what it looks like uh, across the mirror plane there. I'm adding uh, edge weight to the center line. And now I'll start kind of fixing this hood just a little bit. I'll do the same thing as before, selection, and then just scale them so they're flat, and then start pulling them up to add a little more crown to that surface there. And then I start sliding around some of the polygons uh, just to give it a little more even spacing and get rid of some of the bumps here and there. Uh, and then I do the same thing for this, this front edge here. Um, it looks a little bit negative, so I try and flatten it a little bit there uh, just to give it a little better feeling. Again, I'm just straightening these lines out and kind of tweaking the surfaces between them. Now I'm just uh, going to draft this surface to help 
create this inner inner uh, bridge between or for the vent opening there and then I'll start uh, pulling out some more edges to help define that and then I'll start using the slice tool to kind of define where some of those intersections are going to be and I delete the unused polygons and now I'm just going to weld some of these vertices together uh, along that kind of intersection I established before now I'm just going to redo some of the edge weight there to help define that hard edge and do the same thing on the inner. Let's say weld these two points together. Now I'm just checking to see what I actually did uh, in the underlying uh, design. I noticed that I wanted a little bit of the negative through the, the bottom of that area, so I'm going to I'm going to start reforming. Um, this surface just to get that design feature in there. So I'm just sliding some of the edges around to accomplish that and reforming some of that inner there. So again, it's just pushing and pulling to uh, get the form that you want. Uh, but once you have your topology established, it's kind of easy to do that. Uh, that's why I try and define all the edges first and then form everything between them. There I just uh, deleted some of those edges so I can flatten that surface back out and uh, and get it a little more consistent. I didn't really want that negative uh, in the fender there. Here I'm just establishing some of the uh, inner elements I want in this vent here. I'm kind of capturing the, the shape. It's a little different from what I initially done, but I, I Sometimes we'll change my mind and, and change uh, the design after the fact, depending on what I like. So it's a little bit of experimentation on, on where you want edges to go to capture some of your design elements. Um, since I cut through that wheel arch a few times, I'm just making sure that there's no flat spots in that area. And now I'm just sliding these points points around, and I think I'm pretty happy with that area there. Now I'm going to work on connecting it to um, the rest of the body side here. So here I just use the topology pen tool. You can actually use it not in topology mode, and it works the same way. Uh, it'll just pull out points and attach them together. There I just use P to fill that hole. Um, P is the shortcut for polygon, so if you have a closed selection, it'll just create a polygon. Then I just use the slice tool to uh, create the topology in there. And then just finish off the end with some edge weight. Now I'm just going to slide some of these things around and kind of get rid of some of the bumps and, and dips I have in that area. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be the final uh, way it looks, but for now, just to close off the gap and uh, capture the design, that's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, here, I thought I would be able to flatten this whole surface out, but decided not to do that. I uh, wanted some curvature to it there. Now I'm going to go back into the topology tab and start doing the rear of the vehicle, starting to capture some of these design elements. And I'll just start pulling off again with the topology pen, pulling off edges and connecting them to uh, a lot of the other design lines. Again, it's good to just keep everything spaced evenly. It makes life a lot easier when you're trying to manipulate. There is a fine line between too many polygons and, and not enough, so you're going to kind of have to figure that out as you as you build and see, you know, uh, the the least amount you need to capture the design uh, before, especially if you're kind of sculpting some of the surfaces or, or uh, kind of forming them after the fact, it's a lot harder to control a lot of polygons. So I try and keep uh, as little, I try and keep it to a minimum. And here uh, I'm just capturing the curvature of the, I guess the rear spoiler there. Uh, now, what I really should have done was started from the wheel arch 
as you're going to notice here in a second, I don't have enough kind of uh, polygons to attach that to. Uh, so then I'll have to do a little bit of spl uh, splitting here and uh, redoing this area just to capture um, the design out, or just to capture this rear fender so it flows into the wheel arch a little bit better. So like I said earlier, it's it's good to capture that that area and start with the fender because everything's going to have to blend into it at some point. Now I'm just going to use the edge weight tool and tighten up those edges there just to define the, the hard character lines and then sight down things and push and pull points uh, to get rid of some of the bumps. So like before, just using some of the uh, matte cap shaders to evaluate the surfacing um, as, I, as I push and pull some of these points just to get them to uh, flow a little bit cleaner and stuff like that. Uh, so like I did on the front fenders there, I'm just going to use the fall off tool to form the center of that uh, wheel arch, or the fender, I should say, the fender flyer, or fender, rear fender. And now I'm just going to go through and uh, establish that, that hard edge there again using the edge weight tool. And I'm going to uh, reform it and straighten it out just a little bit. Not sure I really want that to go all the way to the end. So this is kind of where the edge weight tool uh, falls apart. With the areas like that, it gets a little curl at the end of it. So I'm not too happy with it. Um, but for now, it's it's okay. Just while I'm establishing some of the design, now I'm gonna again just pump up the surface just a little bit in the middle there. Give it give it a little more form. And I'm going to get rid of the edge weight there, just so it, it blends out a little bit nicer. Uh, it's good to switch. I use two different matte cap shaders, or well, a couple as you can see in the list. Uh, one is a zebra board and one is this uh, kind of silver reflective material. They all have different looks to them, so it's good to kind of use different ones to evaluate. And then from here, I'm going to just pull out from the fenders just to capture this this rear bit of the uh, fender there. And I'm going to tuck under that wheel arch uh, just so it rolls under the body a little bit and exposes some of the tire. I don't need that bottom one, so I'm just going to delete it. And then I like to straighten out some of those lines just to keep the trajectory going towards the rear. And then just keep pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling, forming things here and there. Uh, sometimes you'll you'll go through and do it a couple times before you get it uh, to be where you want it. Uh, but that's fine, especially in this early stage. That's what you're trying to do is capture some of that stuff. And once I have this this area established, I'll uh, start forming some of the rear end. In a little bit, uh, not in this, probably not for uh, another video or two. I think I'm going to near in the end of, of this this section, uh, so I'm going to just leave it here, and we'll pick up uh, again in the next video. I'm going to start doing some of the cabin, where I'll use some of the curve tools to uh, build some like a curve network and, and build polygons from that. So here's the end of this video, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Look forward to it. should be a, a good series here. hope these are uh, helpful and beneficial for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below, and uh, I'll, I'll try and answer them as uh, soon as I can. All right, thanks, guys.